All right, good morning, everybody. Stepping back from fractions for a bit and stepping back into geometry. Talking about different types of shapes. We're going over something we introduced in Investigation 8, but we're expanding upon the idea, get ready for transformations, which is all about changes in shapes. So to refresh your memory, we did learn this on the previous investigation. There are three transformations. They are listed on page 574. You're definitely going to want to have your book out for the Socrative quiz. A translation is sliding a figure one direction without turning. And we had reflection, which is flipping a figure over a certain line. And there was rotation, turning a figure on a certain point. We will talk and further explain each one of these concepts. But to begin with right now, let's go over the fact that these three transformations are nouns. When you describe the action, you should use verbs. So if you're trying to describe a translation, the verb form would be translate. If you're trying to describe a reflection, the verb form would be reflect. And if you're trying to describe a rotation, the verb form is rotate. And hopefully you'll see how we use each one of these verb forms when we're asked to describe our transformations. So let's start off with translation. You want to make sure to tell what direction you're sliding the figure, whether you are translating up, down, left, right, or etc. Here's an example. You could write, I translate the triangle to the right. Just moving a figure in one direction is a translation. Or we have reflection. Tell how you're going to be flipping the shape over, whether along vertically, horizontally, left, right, etc. Here's an example. I will reflect the triangle horizontally. So let's take a look. Here is the horizontal line, right? That is where you would be doing your flipping. So here we reflected the triangle horizontally. We just flipped it over that horizontal line. How about if we were going to reflect the triangle vertically? Well, here is the vertical line. So you would end up reflecting that triangle over this line, flipping it over the line. So there we reflected the triangle vertically. We just flipped it over that vertical line. Next up, we have rotations, where you have to tell what direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise, you're rotating the figure. Let's take a look at an example here. I will rotate the triangle clockwise. So this word clockwise just means the direction a clock moves. We all watch the clock enough in this room. We should be able to know what direction everything goes. There is clockwise. Now we have an example of rotating the triangle counterclockwise. Just the opposite direction a clock goes. Also, remember to describe how much you rotate your shape. Whether it be like a fourth of a turn, you also could describe that as 90 degrees, right? Or something like 180 degrees, or you could also describe it as half a turn. So let's put this all together for a rotation. Here's an example. I will rotate the triangle clockwise 90 degrees. So you're starting off with the triangle here clockwise the direction a clock goes and 90 degrees would be if it made a right angle otherwise known as one-fourth of a turn here i have an example i'll rotate the triangle a half turn counterclockwise so counterclockwise the opposite direction and half of a turn would put it right here so let's keep moving forward here they're asking us to sketch an uppercase letter R 
after reflection in its vertical segment. So let's just remember right now the vertical segment would be right along there. So if it got flipped along the vertical segment, you would want to sketch a letter that looks like this. Here we have one that's asking us to sketch an uppercase letter R after a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. So remember, 90 degrees is perpendicular, making a right angle. So we want to do a fourth turn, a right angle, in a counterclockwise direction. Looks to me like we are going this way. And you would end up sketching a letter that looks like that. Not too tough. Here we have some that name the transformations or combination of transformations that could be used to position triangle A on top of triangle B. This is where you might have to do some serious thinking. So already I can take a look at these two triangles and know that I'm definitely going to have to go and do a reflection on one of them because they're not going to go and line up. So I think I'm going to go ahead and flip or reflect triangle A vertically. So again, just writing down the transformations is not going to be good enough. So you could describe it this way. I reflected triangle A vertically. Now I'm somehow going to have to get triangle A on top of triangle B. So now I'm going to have to go and translate triangle A, and when I'm writing my description of what I'm doing, you want to make sure to tell how many unit segments and what direction. So if I'm going from the corner of triangle A to the corner of triangle B, so I could just translate the triangle, slide them over six unit segments to the right, so you could end up writing something, I reflected triangle A vertically, then I translated triangle A six unit segments to the right. So let's try this again. Name the transformations or combination of transformations that could be used to position triangle A on top of triangle B. I think we can do this with one transformation. I'm going to go with a rotation of this triangle A and I'm rotating at 90 and 180 degrees, or one half of a turn. So I rotated triangle A 180 degrees, or you could have written it as one half of a turn counterclockwise. So that, my friends, is the end. Remember, your three transformations are described for you on page 574. You probably won't need too much scratch paper for the Socrative quiz, but you will have to think and imagine it in your mind. Well, that's all, folks. That's my line. Stepified, babe. Let a star do this. That's all! That's all, folks! Can I go home now?